You see, sitting there doing nothing, doing sign for yourself is negative karma. Why? You're not that evil girl. It's evil. You don't have to go and kill. You don't have to go to the Iraqi war and shoot people. You don't have to do that. You can sit in your room and feel sorry for yourself and be complacent and do absolutely nothing. And outwardly to people who don't have wisdom, do not doing anything bad. But because you're rehabituating who you're not, and the mind can be your black hand of color. Sitting in a room with attachment, you can think of karma on a very subtle. Tamil. Tamil ki le. Tale. Very subtle karma. Subtle. Raka ki le means very, very rough karma. Tale is very subtle karma, which is the most powerful. Why? Listen carefully. When you just sit there, I have money, it's mine, I'm not going to use it. I, I, it's my wife, it's my lover, it's my, it's my house, me, me. I, I, I want to do me. I don't want to do this, I'm me. And you don't say anything. You don't go and hit people, you don't yell, you don't scream, you don't shout, you don't do anything. You don't do anything. But sitting there, eating, watching TV, and just, uh, shitting and, and, you know, cleaning yourself, washing, you know, cooking, you collect negative karma. And that negative karma is very subtle. Do you know why? Because you're not existing with freedom from samsara. You're existing within samsara, increasing your samsara, because everything you think and everything you operate comes out of the projected, dualistic, self grasping mind. Everything comes out of... So you may be a very nice housewife. You may be a very nice house husband. You may be a nice son, daughter, whatever. But to all outer appearances, you have the reputation you're nice. You are, according to the world. But on a very universal, absolute level. It's not that you're nice or not nice. This type of fashion will bring you to the free or else. So don't talk about nice. Don't talk about not nice. It has no definition on the absolute realm. On the absolute realm, on the absolute level, on the absolute feeding yourself, cherishing mind. It could only be one reaction, one action, one result. More circumstances where your self-cherishing mind based after upon itself. Okay. So you may think, but I don't speak to other people. I don't eat meat. You know, I don't yell at anybody. I fight with my wife and girlfriend or, the, or, or I fight with my boyfriend and husband once in a while. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a good citizen. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. You are. But you see, those are good and bad made by culture and people who are not with wisdom. That's not absolute. On an absolute level, on the level that Buddha is talking about, listen carefully, you collect negative karma just like this. Just like this. Why? You come from ignorance. You come from desire. And you come from attachment. You live within it. And you create it. And that's the cycle of evil. That's the cycle. So you may think, well, I take care of my family, you know, and I'm responsible, and I, you know, I do this, and, you know, I work, and I support, and I'm doing dharma work, and I, you know, I clean up for my guru, and, you know, uh, I cook, and, uh, you know, I work, and, and, and I, I don't kill, I don't steal, I don't lie, I'm, I'm a good person. You know, I got plans for the initiation, and I got vows, and I go to the center, and I ring my bell once in a while, and, you know, and I'm a good person. You are. You are a good person. But there's no, that is just, on a very basic basic level. But on an absolute level, absolute means what? Where there is no time, space, projection, color, and form. On an absolute level, where it's only mind. We are collecting karma that increases this type of existence. People don't understand See, people say they want high teachings. They're not ready. People say they want advanced teachings. How? Oh, when you can't even do the basics. You don't even hold commitments. When you break your commitments, when you break your samaya, now listen carefully, when you break your guru devotion, when you break your samaya, you break the tantra vows, you break your bodhicitta vows, you break your um, kasi uh, refuge vows, when you break all these, it indirectly affects the absolute. Why? The little bit of merit you collect, by the time it gets over here, it's just dispersing. If we have, if we have a, you know, water, we have a cup of water, 
a, a ladle, they have a ladle of water. And I want to, I want to hit maple. And I go like that. Because she's so far away, by the time, you know, a few drops are hit her, but mostly hit people around her. But she's very nearby and hit. Similarly, because we have collected so much karma from previous lives, and our previous lives are so huge, it's like throwing our positive karma, a little bit of 35 profession, uh, professional um, practices we do, a little bit of sadhana and mantras, a little bit of discipline we When you go back to the absolute vehicle, combined and dedicated, it's almost like just splattered. Almost not reached there. And hence, that's why people who do Dharma practice over a long period of time, a lot of people you see them, no result, no difference. Why? They don't hold their thoughts. And the most saddest thing is this the most saddest thing is that they actually be justified in themselves and other people. That they're good and they're holding their thoughts. Why? They get away with, oh, I the work. Oh, you know, they said this to me. Oh, I want, I want to do this, and I can't do this. I'm, you know, they, they make all kinds of excuses. But you just have to understand something. These are good for us. But our karma in existence is not on this level. It's on the absolute level. Existing creates negative karma. That's why Buddha said, the minute you're born, the minute you're born, the collection of negative karma starts. The very fact that a baby gives Pain to its mother by suckling her breast is already a sign of its nature. Pain. You say instinct. It's not instinct. Pain is a habitual mind. Pain. How much pain we give to mother, we don't care. As long as I get And for some of us, our lives, we suckle our mother. And what, why pain? You may think, well, it's the responsibility of all this. But you already understand something. That's a very rough thing. Rough hope you get negative karma, but on an absolute level, on an absolute level, each time we break our vows. And what are vows? Vows are not something you swear in front of Buddha and then I never do again, or you swear on a Bible. It's not that. Vows are things that help us, guidelines that help us to go away from the self-cherishing mind. That is absolutely universal. That on every universe, in every planet, in every existence, come sum, come chit. All three realms, form, formless, and desire, is acceptable as something that will take you away from the self cherishing mind. So vows are not, I can do and I cannot do. Oh, I broke my vow. No! That's on a very relative, very basic, childish level. That's why mamas teach us. Like children talk about, they can do everything backwards. They can drink sake all day. They can be drunk all day. They can have sex with two women openly. They can do anything they want and they don't collect any negative karma. It's not because they are monasidas. They're operating from the absolute level. What's the absolute level? That these rules don't apply anymore. Why does it not apply anymore? Because it doesn't arise from the self cherishing mind. There's a difference. There's a difference. That's why this type of thought is the most highest esoteric teachings. Why? Only a few people can understand that. That's why if you teach Tantra, very small groups can understand it. Very secret. For basic Hinayana and Mahayana, if you talk about this, you can. Oh, a Lama? A Lama dream? How can? Oh, a Lama disrobe? How can? Oh, oh, a monk? Oh, a master? A master? Oh, uh, I use money by, by, uh, by a furniture? Oh, cannot? Oh, I saw the master Ikea? Oh! Everybody freaked out. Oh! I saw Lama in a disco. Oh, oh. You know, what? These people don't operate on that level. So what I'm trying to say is, actions is not the point. But at our level, actions is the point, which leads to no action. Why? The absolute level is beyond us right now. Right now. But, you see, if we cannot achieve that level, the Buddha wouldn't have even taught about it. It's because we can't achieve it a bit of thought. So, every day that we exist, never mind the vows and all that stuff. Let's say you never heard about Buddhism. Let's say you never heard about Dharma. Let's say you never heard about anything. Nothing at all. You know nothing about Dharma or Buddhism at all. You're still not exempt from negative karma. And every day you exist, 
the three lower realms exist. The three higher realms, higher realms exist. The formless realm exists. The desire realms exist. The Jadi Khan, desire realm. Sumedhi Khan, formless realm. Sukham, form realm. All of this, whether you are Buddhist or whether you accept or not, or whether you're a wild animal, whether you're an insect, whether you're an amoeba, they all exist because it's absolute. What is absolute? What is absolute? Absolute means the thing that exists on its own accord without us having to put rules on it or projections or barriers and borders and posts. You see, in our world, we say, you're yellow, you're black, you cannot do this. You're female, you're not. You're male, you cannot. We make up these rules. You have to marry at this age. If you're a man, you're supposed to do this. If you're a boy, you're supposed to do this. If you're a Dharma student, you're supposed to do this. If you're, if you're a housewife, you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to, you're supposed to, these are rules made up on a very basic fundamental level by people who are blind. Us and our forefathers. These are all blind rules followed. That's supposed to bring us happiness. That's why no one's happy. In the world, no one's happy when they follow these rules. But if you don't follow these rules, there is no rule, so you're not happy. Why in samsara? There's no this way, there's no that way. There is no happiness in samsara. None. None at all. So each time we break our vows, happily, and then we immediately, oh, I'm sorry. You see, your sorry has no effect. And in fact, it increases your vows, your breakage. I'll tell you why. Every time you break your vow, and you say, I'm sorry, Then it seals it. Why? You let yourself know how to do it. That's why people who say, I'm sorry very fast, they don't make a change for themselves, they seal the action. What is the seal? How to do it. On a relative level, the person's okay with you. On an absolute level, oh, I'm pure upon my karma one. I'm an opposite. Oh no. Oh no. Very dangerous. 